Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so today we're going to talk about asymptotes, maxes and mins, domains and ranges. Our last day of the chapter, and we're going to kind of pull everything together. We know how to graph all six trig functions, and now we're just going to talk about those different things, different attributes of the functions, okay? So let's get started here. Um, let's start with a basic function. So if you say y is equal to sine of x, the favorite trig function of uh, plumbers, least favorite of the people on the Titanic. Too soon, too soon. Um, and we have uh, cosine of x. So these are pretty similar, okay? Um, first of all, they have no asymptotes. You guys should know that, right? In other words, it's, it's defined everywhere, right? As you go on the x-axis, it goes basically from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is the domain. So domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, pretty easy. Um, the range just for the basic trig function. So think about it. How high does it go? Well, doesn't sine go up to one and doesn't go to negative one? And same thing with cosine. So the range is from negative one to one. That's pretty easy, right? And this bracket too because it includes that value. So we can really say our if I ask you just for a max, you could say the max is one, and you can say that the min is negative one. Okay, that's pretty easy. So let's take a look at, uh, first of all, this is true, this guy right here is true no matter what. It can be anything with sine of x or cosine of x. Um, the domain is always from negative infinity to positive infinity. But let's take a look at other ranges. Okay, so let's try um, y is equal to um, 2 plus 4 sine of 2 parentheses x minus pi over 8. Now, first of all, math fans, this, who cares about it? Okay, that doesn't affect it at all. That just changes, you know, the period. It moves left and right. It certainly doesn't change the range. We still say domain for this problem, as we said before, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, again, those are parentheses too, right? Um, think about the range, though. And you guys are smart kids. Think logically. If you have a 2, right, the 2 is your vertical shift. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be at 2, as you, where's your, your dotted line is going to be. And then you're going to go from there, you're going to go up 4, right? Because 4 is your amplitude. So you're going to go up 4 to high as of 6, and you're going to go down 4 to a low of negative 2. So that's what your range is. It's pretty easy to t calculate it, right? Negative 2 to 6, again, with brackets. Okay? So real quickly, uh, let's do y is equal to negative 7 minus 12. Let's do a cosine. And again, I don't care what that is. It doesn't matter, okay? Because I'm not going to use it anyway. So remember, your, your dotted line is at negative 7, and you're going to go up 12 and down 12 from that point. So you're, if I add 12 to that, I get 5, and if I subtract 12, I get negative 19. So there you go. Your range is going to be bracket negative 19 to 5. Okay, and of course... Our domain, we already said, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so sine and cosine, easiest of all the trig functions. So let's kind of move over to um, cosecant and secant. Um, so if I have, let me just write that out. So y is equal to cosecant of x and y is equal to secant of x. So the first thing I like to talk about is the range. So I want you guys to kind of think about it. If let's just draw, um, let's work it with cosecant first, right? It's kind of based off of a nice sine graph, right? And what do you draw here? You well, you draw your asymptotes here, right? Your asymptotes. And think about that when I graph this, the graph is going to look like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the range for the sine graph. So let's just, look, if I look at the basic graph here, do you guys agree this is one and this is negative one? So what is the range for the, the blue graph, right? The cosecant graph? Well, isn't it everything below that negative one? So here again, let me write the range for sine of x, y equals sine of x, okay? And we said that's negative one to one. So what it is, is it basically your negative one is your low point and it's everything below that, which means negative infinity to that negative one 
bracket because, of course, it's including the point. And then the other way, it's going to be uh, everything above 1. So it's going to be bracket 1, 2, positive infinity. All right. So my basically, let me just kind of write this out. I'll write in green. The range for cosecant is going to be um, one, uh, negative, sorry, negative infinity, negative infinity to, oh, let me write that all over again. It's going to be negative infinity to uh, negative one bracket union one to infinity. Okay, it's pretty easy, right? Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so let's just, let me just do another example here before I get into uh, the domain, because that's actually the more of the challenging thing here. So let me just do another one. So if I said y is equal to 2 plus 4, co or let's do secant. Let's do uh, se secant, because it, it doesn't matter, right? It's secant of blah, 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 blah. That doesn't really matter. So again, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's look at cosine, and we know cosine, if you're at 2 and you're going down 4, cosine is between negative 2 and it's going to go up to 6. So for this graph, the range is going to be from negative infinity to negative 2, bracket, union, bracket, 6 to infinity. Okay? So again, range is like super easy as long as you know um, what... Uh, you know what, what the the cosine is and the sine is. You're easy for the secant and cosecant. Okay, so now let's take a look at the uh, asymptotes, asymptotes and domain. Okay, so let's let's write that out here. So we have domain and asymptotes, and they kind of go hand in hand. Um. So, do you guys agree that? For, um, let's look at y is equal to cosecant of x. So you guys agree that y equals sine of x, it's everywhere. It's the, the uh, domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? That's pretty easy. Well, what, what issue do I have with uh, cosecant? Well, remember, well, you, we kind of just drew this a little while ago, right? If here's your graph of sine, um, the issue that I have, it's, it is also negative infinity to positive infinity. So let me actually write that down here. So my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. But what's the only issue? It can't be an asymptote. It's not defined there. Okay. So we need to come up with um, we need to come up with our asymptotes first. Okay. So it's basically going to be this is the domain, and then you're going to say, well, but it's the domain except it's not equal to this value and this value and this value. And so how are we going to write that? Well, okay, well, let me let me clear this out again. And let's, again, let's go back to our basic function, y equals cosecant of x. Um, first of all, let's talk about where their asymptotes are. Now, I may ask you two different things. I may ask you, hey, give me a couple equations for the asymptotes. Well, first of all, you guys know that the, dot, the dotted lines are, are vertical. So you know it's going to be x equals. That's really important. Okay, x equals. And so what you're going to do is, uh, where is it? Where is uh, cosecant undefined? Well, it's wherever sine equals zero. Do you guys agree with that? Wherever sine is zero, cosecant is undefined. So this is like chapter one, guys. Sine is zero at x equals what? Zero. Sine is zero, zero. Sine of pi equals zero, and sine of two pi equals zero. Right? So you can go 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. So these are all equations of asymptotes. So if I ask you for an equation of an asymptote, equation of an asymptote, it's always x equals. Okay, don't forget that. x equals something. And remember, x equals where it's undefined. Okay? So... You got those values, the 0, the pi, the 2 pi. Now, if I ask you a general equation, so let me clear this out here again. Um, if I so write this out, cosecant of x. And if I say a general equation for asymptotes. So in other words, one equation that really would cover all the asymptotes. Here's the deal. 
let's just write out our old, we said zero, x equals zero, x equals pi. Um, what do you notice about these? Do you guys notice these are equally spaced, right? The spacing between these is pi. The spacing between this is pi. If I do an x equals three pi, the spacing is also pi. So what does that look like to you? It's something you guys learned last year. It looks like a sequence of numbers, doesn't it? Okay, zero, pi, two pi, three pi. What type of sequence of numbers? Okay, you guys should think about it. You should remember it's an arithmetic sequence because it's uh, the, it's got a common difference. In this case, the common difference is pi. So it's going up by pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a general equation using our nice little friendly term a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, you guys really should remember that this is actually a pretty significant equation from last year. Okay, remember, a sub n is your general term. That's what I'm going to solve for. a sub 1 is, of course, your first term. d is your common difference. And you're going to leave n in there because that's that's the, the variable. Okay, so let's, let's uh, plug in. Let's start out as a sub 1 is 0. Doesn't matter. We can use pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to say a sub n is equal to a sub 1, 0, plus d. d is pi times n minus 1. All right, so a sub n is, if I simplify this and I distribute that, I get um, pi times n minus pi. Okay, pi times n minus pi. This is it, math fans. Now, you can even make it simpler and actually just have pi n. But this is acceptable too because it works for every. You can give me any value of n, and it'll give you uh, it'll give you an asymptote. N is 10, 20, negative 3. N can be any value. So you're going to say uh, for a general equation, a sub n equals pi n minus pi. But you got to tell me n is an integer. And that's what this means. N is a, is a set of integers. Okay. So these are the two things you're going to give me. You're going to say this, and you're going to say this. And that's going to be your asymptotes. All right. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit because now you're saying, well, how does that even work with domain? Well, do you guys agree? It's every place we even said domain, domain is for just, again, y is equal to cosecant of x. It's from negative infinity to positive infinity. x cannot equal n pi or pi n, it doesn't matter, n pi minus pi n is an integer. That's what you're going to tell me. Okay, so again, this is, you just repeated this. Here it is. You just repeated that with what you just did here. Okay, because that's what the domain is. The domain is every place except for where there's an asymptote. Okay, so we kind of killed two birds with one stone. It sounds pretty evil, so we can Say so we just killed two dandelions with one spray of weed killer. It's friendlier, okay? Unless you're a vegetarian, that's maybe bad too. I don't know. Okay, but anyway, um, that's why these really go together, guys. Okay? Range, again, different. We already talked about that. That's your domain. So let's actually do another problem here because that was kind of, we did a basic cosecant graph. Let's do a more complicated one because um, this one took a long time. All right, so if I said uh, y is equal to negative 3 minus 7, um, now let's do a, we can do a, uh, that was cosecant. We'll do a secant graph. Secant of two parentheses x minus pi over 4. Okay, so, um, a range is really easy. Do you guys agree? Range, again, this is for, uh, if I did it for cosine, cosine is going to be between, it's negative 3 plus 7 and negative 3 minus 7. So negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10, and negative 3 plus 7 is 4. So between negative 10 and 4, that means the range for this function is going to be negative infinity to negative 10 union 4 to infinity. Okay? So that's it. And I, I might ask you, hey, find two asymptotes. 
So you're going to set this top guy here equal to, well, where is secant undefined? Okay, well, secant is undefined where cosine is equal to zero. And where is cosine equal to zero? Well, cosine of pi over two is zero, and cosine of three pi over two equals zero. So guys, to come up with my general equation, I just need two points. I mean, you can give me more, but I just need two. Okay, so these two places, it's equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is, see this guy right here? Well, if it's the secant of that, if that equals pi over two, it's undefined. If that blue spot is equal to three pi over two, it's undefined. So I'm gonna write two parentheses x minus pi over four equals pi over two, because I'm looking where it's undefined. And two parentheses x minus pi over four equals three pi over two. So this is going to give me two equations. And if I solve this, I can multiply by one half and I get x minus pi over four equals pi over four, and then add pi over four. So x is equal to pi over two. Okay, so that's one equation. And same thing, I multiply by one half, so I get x minus pi over four equals three pi over four, and add pi over four, so x equals um, pi. Okay. So those are our two equations. So if I ask you for two equations, there you go. You're going to give me those two. X equals pi over 2, x equals pi. Now if I said, hey, I want a general equation. Okay, well, okay, well, I got, I'm going to cursor down here a little bit again. Um, a general asymptote equation. Is, well, remember, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, so um, let's plug it in. a sub n equals a sub 1, which is pi over 2, plus d. What's the difference between these two? Do you guys agree it's pi over 2? Times n minus 1. Okay, so simplify it. a sub n equals pi over 2 plus pi over 2n, oops, pi over 2n minus pi over 2. So, keep going the cursor down a little bit more. Uh, a sub n is equal to pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Oh, it's just pi over 2 n. There we go. That's your general equation for an asymptote. All right. Now, if I ask you for the domain, domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. X cannot equal, there we go, this guy right here pi over 2n, where n is an integer. There we go. Right? Not bad at all. Okay? So as soon as you come up with that equation for the asymptote, that's that's included in the domain, but it's not equal to that n pi. Or in this case, pi over 2n, right? Okay? So that's, you just have to remember, sine is undefined, or I should say cosecant is undefined, where sine is equal to zero which is zero and pi and two pi and three pi. And secant is where cosine is zero and cosine of zero is zero at pi over two and three pi over two and negative pi over two and so, okay. So that's domain range of all those functions. All right, let's, uh, I don't want to make this long, this video is getting a little longer. Let's uh, just go to uh, um, tangent, okay? So I said y is equal to tangent of x, which is the favorite of polite people or the army. And then we also have y equals cotangent of x. Okay. Um, so basically it's the same work as cosecant and secant for asymptotes and domain. Okay, same work. What is the range for these functions? What do you think? Think about it. So here was, here was a tangent. Okay, and here are your asymptotes here. Well, what's range? Range is always negative infinity to positive infinity. Always, always, always. Okay, because it goes as high and as low. Okay, that's the range. Always, always, always. For it doesn't matter what kind of tangent or cotangent function. And when we talk about domain, it's the same thing as cosecant and secant. You got to look at the asymptotes. Okay, all right, so um, let me delete this out here again. So let's go back to y equals tangent of x. 
Um, again, we set our ranges negative infinity to positive infinity. That was getting super easy. And then uh, where's tangent undefined? Well, you guys should know that again. This is chapter one. You should say, oh, at x equals pi over two and x equals three pi over two. Okay, so those are two equations of asymptotes. Two equations where it's undefined. So how about a general equation for asymptotes? General equation for asymptotes. Okay, um, well, we're going to do the same thing, guys. A sub n equals a sub 1, which is pi over 2, plus d. What's the difference between those? 2 pi over 2, which is just pi times n minus 1. So simplify that. We get pi over 2 plus pi n minus pi. So a sub n is equal to pi n minus pi over 2. Okay, so that is your general equation for an asymptote. Okay, pretty easy. Um, and what do you have to, of course, I'll say n is an integer. That's important too. Okay, cool. Uh, so now I ask for your domain. So let's see, here, I can write this up here. This is the domain. You're going to say um, negative infinity, positive infinity, just like secant and cosecant. Uh, x is not equal to pi n minus pi over 2. n is an integer. There we go. That's your domain. What? That's not bad. Okay, so as soon as you can, you can find that, as soon as you find that general equation for the asymptote, that's your domain. Except not equal to that value, of course. Okay? All right, so let's look at, uh, let's look at cotangent. Okay, cotangent is Similar. So we're going to make it a complicated cotangent one. So if I said y is equal to negative 3 plus 5 cotangent of 2x minus pi over 2. Okay. So um, what's my range? Hey, negative infinity, positive infinity. Super, super easy with tangent. Okay. So let's look at uh, asymptotes. Asymptotes, remember, um, it's where this is undefined. And where is cotangent undefined? Well, it's undefined at 0 and undefined at pi. And 2 pi and 3 pi, right? Okay, you should know that because tangent is 0. Tangent is 0 is 0, so that means cotangent of 0 is undefined. Okay, so we got 0 and pi. So if I, get, uh, if I add pi over 2, I get 2x equals pi over 2. Multiply by 1 half, x equals pi over 4. And same thing, 2x add pi over 2, I get 3 pi over 2. And multiply by 1 half, and I get 3 pi over 4. Okay, so these are two equations of asymptotes. So equations of asymptotes. Okay. Um, if I want to get my general equation, but those are my two points. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d. What's the difference between these? 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d pi over 2 times n minus 1. Okay, put it together. a sub n equals pi over 4 plus pi over 2 n minus pi over 2. So a sub n is equal to uh, pi over 2 and pi over 4 minus pi over 2 is minus pi over 4. There we go. That's the general equation for an asymptote. So here I like to write general equation for asymptotes. Okay. So, of course, what is our domain? Domain is super easy, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity. X cannot equal pi over 2n minus pi over 4. n is an integer. Oh, by the way, that's also here. n is an integer. That's important. Okay, for the domain as well. Or for the domain and the asymptotes. Okay? You got to tell me that. Because n can't be, like, think about it. N's, it's 1, 2, 3. It can't be half because that would give you an asymptote in the wrong place. So you got to tell me n's always an integer for these problems. Okay? So...
just real quickly to summarize um, we you know sine and cosine I'm not even going to write this out you got sine and cosine super easy um, when you're talking about secant and cosecant you got to look at the domain or the range for sine and cosine right um, because when you look at that you're looking truly at this and this so you got to figure out what value is between and then it doesn't include those values okay and then of course when you're talking about the range that's you first you got to look at uh, asymptotes and then you're going to tell me the domain is negative infinity positive infinity except at those asymptotes okay and I showed you how to do the asymptotes and then really the same thing with secant or for uh, cotangent tangent of course the range is negative infinity to positive infinity and the domain is again you ignore all the asymptotes okay so that's it math fans 26 minutes video here and uh, hopefully you guys are good to go with knowing uh, how to find out Max's min's equations of asymptotes and general equations of asymptotes and domains and ranges. All right. That's it, math fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.